remember us walking on the beach this morning with her mom. She was laughing at their footprints on the sand. Her mom was splashing salty water all over her, and she felt the sun on her face. She was happy. But Lila's mom has been dead for 30 years. For Jamie, everything makes sense now. The loud banging on the walls, the insults he heard late at night, the strange looks he got on the staircase, his neighbors are spies, and now that he found out, they want to get rid of him. But nobody believes Jamie. They say he's imagining things. We all have things that we think we remember, that we believe with great conviction. But for other people, they are false, irrational, even mad. These differences in perspective make communication difficult. It is difficult for us to understand and trust other people, and it's difficult for them to understand and trust us. So it's only natural that we tend to see these unusual reports as harmful and disruptive. I am a philosopher interested in the strengths and the limitations of the human mind, and in my current project, which brings together research in philosophy and psychology, I ask whether unusual reports, like the ones by Lila and Jamie, can have any benefits. So today, I'm going to give you three reasons why we should not dismiss stories like the ones by Lila and Jamie. The first point I want to make is that with some background information, even unusual reports make sense. Once we know more about Lila's and Jamie's lives, what experiences they had, and what future they're facing, we get a glimpse of what it means to be them. Take Lila, for instance. The walk on the beach memory contains some false information. The walk did not happen this morning, and her mom is dead. But the same memory contains some true information. It is true that Lila lived near the beach when she was younger, and it is true that she took frequent walks on the beach with her parents. The issue is that Lila has a memory impairment, and there are some key events in her life that she cannot remember, including her mother's death. What she cannot remember is not reflected in her reports and does not constrain her memories. What about Jamie? Why would he come up with the theory that his neighbors are spies? Jamie hears voices and has other auditory experiences. On top of that, he tends to interpret the behavior of other people as hostile, even when it is not meant to be. That's not surprising, because Jamie has been treated badly and unfairly in his life, and this is what he has come to expect from his social environment. So his strange theory that his neighbors are spies is a way to make sense of the experiences that he's having. My second point is that unusual reports can have an important role to play in our mental lives. We tell stories, and stories have different functions. They are a means of expression, they are a way of communicating with other people, and they are a way of understanding the world around us. Not all the functions of memories are compromised when memories and other stories get some details wrong. Telling stories that are central to our identity, as Lila does, help us remember things that are important to us. And telling stories that make sense of our experiences, as Jamie does, gives us a sense of competence and purpose. We know what's going on. So take Lila and the walk on the beach memory. That report contains some information that she can share with other people. Due to her fading autobiographical memory, the information that she can share is very limited. And when there is no information to share, 
Social interactions suffer. And when we cannot communicate with other people, we cannot exchange information, our well-being is compromised and also our cognitive performance. We feel better and we do better when we can exchange information. So that memory gives Lila some confidence, there is something she knows about her past, and supports the level of communication that is required for meaningful social interactions. You may consider it a false version of a real past event. And the fact that it is repeated and shared makes it more likely that Lila will continue to remember the information contained in it. What about Jamie? Surely there are no benefits in believing that your neighbors are spies. Well, Jamie is having these puzzling experiences. And at the beginning, he didn't know why, how to interpret them. He heard voices, but he didn't know where the voices came from. That created a level of uncertainty that was almost unbearable. Great anxiety ensued from that. So his theory is implausible, but at least what it does, it takes away the uncertainty. Now Jamie feels he knows where the voices come from, and he can do something about them. Naturally, with unusual thoughts like the ones we have been talking about, there are costs as well as benefits. And so far, I've been stressing the benefits. I've told you that Leela and Jamie were in a critical situation for quite some time, and their news reports were a response to that situation. I also told you that they were a way for them to restore contact with their social environment, an imperfect way, but a way still. But unusual reports like Lila's and Jamie's are likely to cause further misunderstandings with other people and to generate unfulfilled expectations in them. My aunt had Alzheimer's disease, and Lila's story is inspired by what my aunt used to say. And she used to be very distressed when she could not find her parents around. Where did they go? Why did they leave me here? And the young man who is the basis for Jamie's story, a case that we've been studying and writing about, was so distressed about the idea that his neighbors might want to attack him, that he gained entrance to their flat and removed objects from the flat that could be used as weapons against him. Let me get to the final point. We are all like Lila and Jamie not because we will develop dementia later in life or because we will experience hallucinations or delusions. Some of us will and some of us won't. But because even without developing dementia and without experiencing hallucinations and delusions, we all have heavily reconstructed memories and beliefs that are not backed up by the evidence and are not shared by other people. Take memory. We are all creative with our past. We saw the people with dementia tend to see themselves as they were before the onset of their illness, younger, more active, more independent than they have become. And that's because they are imposing some coherence on the image they've got of themselves. But we all do that. We all tend to see ourselves as something that doesn't change across time. So, for instance, it has been shown that we tend to attribute our current political beliefs to our younger selves, neglecting the fact that our views have changed over the years. And even when it comes to evidence, we are highly selective. We take on board evidence that seems to support our existing beliefs, but we tend to dismiss evidence that challenges our current theories which begins to explain why prejudiced and superstitious beliefs are very difficult to get rid of, even when there is evidence against them. We also tend to overestimate our skills and talents, believing that we are better than the evidence suggests. And here is an example. I think I do above-average work. 
But in the 70s, Cross asked college professors in the US whether they thought they were doing above average work. And 94% of them said they did. So maths is not on my side. The research I'm doing into the cost and benefits of unusual reports is an attempt to challenge the theoretical foundations of the stigma that is commonly associated with mental health issues. The three reasons I've given you today, not to dismiss the stories by Leela and Jamie, are also reasons to stop stigmatizing people with dementia, psychosis, and other mental health issues, to stop seeing them as them as opposed to us. There is no us and them. Remember that one, even unusual beliefs can be understood in context with some background information. Two, even unusual beliefs have an important role to play in our mental lives, maybe helping preserve our identity or make sense of our experiences. And three, we all take liberties with our stories, constructing the version of ourselves and the version of reality the best suits our interests. The stories we tell shape our lives. They are instrumental to us socializing, learning, acting, overcoming obstacles, and sometimes to be playing their meaning-making, unifying role. They need to take an unusual turn. So here is my suggestion. When we hear an unusual report, an unusual story, Let's not widen our eyes, let's not shake our heads. Let's lend an ear and listen. Because by striving to understand the other, we can gain a better understanding of ourselves. Thank you.